Hi, it's Tom here from FDS and today's subject is how to put a Cherry style DC2 lever action micro switch into the Strife and this is applicable to any flywheel blaster with a rev trigger and we're going to slot this little micro switch in there and I'm going to show you how to do it whilst retaining the trigger lock because this stops people from pulling the trigger when there's no rev button and it will stop you getting the classic flywheel stall where somebody's pushed a dart into the flywheels when there's no motors running. So I always leave this in. It's particularly helpful if you're loaning stuff out and also if you are prone to panic. And I know some people tend to panic grab triggers, especially in HVZ. So I always leave that in. I'll start by taking the cover off. You can see this is a really early build of mine. This is Teflon wire in here. This is Teflon insulated wire. And uh, that is actually, um, I think, 16 AWG. It just looks thin because the insulation is really thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this stock switch like that to get it out of the way just for now. I'll come back to that in a minute. The downside about Teflon as you can see is it wasn't terribly flexible. If I feel like it I might replace those in a minute. What you're aiming to do is you want to get that micro switch in there like that. So you're going to have to do some cutting of some of these parts and you don't want to get in the way of this, the screw port, because then you can refit the cover easily. So I'm going to start by clipping out some of the, this is just a rough way of getting this cut, so I'm just going to clip out some of these bits of plastic. Remember, cut small first and then make it bigger. Don't cut big first and make it, you can't make it smaller, otherwise you'll be building up plastic a lot. And that post needs to go as well. So roughly what you're aiming for in this area is a nice flat surface on which to mount your micro switch and you don't want to interfere much with the operation of the lever. This one's got the lever cut down slightly which is going to make life a little bit more difficult. Okay so now what I've got to do is I've got to just get this a bit flatter. I'm just using a hobby knife here just to uh, shave this down. I prefer this to using a Dremel because there's more control available with a knife blade um, although you can use a Dremel if you own one and you really want to justify the expense. You can just dremel this flat, but personally I prefer to carve it to the shape that I want. So remember when you're doing this job to keep test fitting and uh, just to get your switch where you want it. So what I'm going to do now to get a really nice fit with this rev trigger, you want the rev trigger on a fairly light touch. So I'm going to bend this piece of the arm just gently up a little bit so that it's contacting about here and you must have it contact in the middle. The other thing that you can do if you want a really secure bond and you want to increase the because at the moment the glue is only going to be resting on here. What you can do is you can pack this full of um, epoxy putty and then leave it to fully cure overnight and then glue your switch in. The other thing that you can do is you can shave this down further and then you can use a piece of plastic like this and bond piece of plastic sheet. This is just styrene sheet. I had just styrene sheet scrap. You can bond a piece of styrene sheet over the whole area, not out here, and just cut it down a little bit so that it fits into there. So you can cut it down so it fits into there and then you can glue your switch to it. Now we're concentrating on this area to finish up now. So you can see that I've bent the end of my micro switch up a little bit to compensate for the lever being a little on the short side and I'm test fitting. What I want to do is I want to see if it's all going to fit nicely under my stock cover. Right. Now what's getting in the way at the moment is this area here on the stock cover. You can see this ridge here and this ridge here. So what you've got to do is cut that little ridge piece out. So I made an initial cut here on that ridge piece with a, uh, with a, with a pair of plastic shears. Now I'm just going to carve that out, I'm trying to find a way of doing it where I don't cut my finger off. So I'll just carve that out like that. This is the same process you can use for any ribs. You don't need a uh, Dremel to remove ribbing and plastic parts. You just need a decent knife. Okay, there you go. So that cover is now set up so that it's going to fit really nicely. And that actually is holding the micro switch quite well on its own. And you can see that my trigger works. So. Okay, so here's the little tiny bit of plastic that I've just made up to go across here. And I realized that I'd filed a little bit too far down with that and that the arm was then going to catch on here on the lock. 
Now, if you're removing this lock, that doesn't matter. You want the arm to really sit in this area to get a really nice contact, and then as it pushes in, it will slide down the ramp, which is great. But I really want this lock to work, and so I've just got a little plastic spacer here. This is a 0.5 millimeter stone sheet. And then whenever you glue anything, even if it is DevCon, it tells you you don't need to do so. Just roughen the faces of it. A little bit of emery cloth or a file, because it just helps the glue bond, gives it a greater surface area and something to tack to. Especially like this, this plastic's been sitting in my box for a while, so it may have got all kinds of odds and ends on it. And the same with the back of the micro switch. It'll still be covered in stuff from the release agent and the manufacturing process, so just give it a roughening up on the back of the switch. Now the other thing to note is that you want to remember which one is your common. You want the common and the normally open. So it's worth checking those. Common, normally open, it says so on the switch, but in this instance I'm going to flip it over so I won't be able to see. So I'll know that the common is the end pin and the normally open is the middle pin. So that will be the common this end, normally open that end, and then I won't be using the normally closed. Okay, I'm just applying my DevCon now, and you want to keep the DevCon away from the spring part, you really want to stick that down. You can be fairly generous with your application in here because it's all going down into the ridge and that will give you a bit of a more secure bond like that. And then your little scrap like that. And that is now giving us maximum surface area to bond our micro switch. So a thin film, don't want tons. It's going to stick. Whatever you do, it's going to stick, trust me. That's more than enough for DevCon at this kind of load. There we go. And then switch in. What you want to watch out for, which I've just forgotten, is you don't want too much glue here because you're going to get your DevCon on your switch activator, which you don't want. So I'll just take that back out of the way. And again. And then before you lock everything up, hold it in place and check your switch. That's working nicely. So now I can put my cover back on. Okay, as you can see, as I finished up, I did have to do a little bit more trimming. I just trimmed a bit back off here so that it was sitting off this back step on the um, micro switch because it was pushing it all out of alignment inside. And that sits down very nicely now. That's all nice and tidy and holding it in place. The DevCon's still soft, so I'm not going to pull the trigger, but I know it works because I've tested. Well, one thing in this blaster that people might be interested in is up here, you can see this additional Dean's connector. Now, before people ask what that's for, that's actually a plug-in motor block. What that means is that if you want to take the flywheel motors out for servicing, you can just undo the wiring cover, peel it back, and then pull out the motors and unplug them from the loom, leaving the rest of the loom in the blaster. And that means you don't need to take out the rev trigger micro switch when you want to service these. So if you want to change your flywheels, that's the best location. In the past, I have put them down inside here in this cavity at the front. There's just enough room in there if you cut away some of the supporting webs to cram in a um, connector, but I think that's a better location. So there you go, there's some stuff there for future developments, and uh, enjoy your Microswitch Trigger mod.